In this problem, we're going to do a hypothesis test using paired in StatCrunch. So we have couples, and these are the words uh, that the couples speak uh, in a day. So, uh, for example, this first couple here, this male spoke 16,141 words, and the female spoke 24,355 words. And then over here, this is another uh, couple, etc. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight couples. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click this little box and click Open in StatCrunch. And I did that already, and it puts the data in for you. And uh, they're giving us the significance level, that's alpha. And we want to test the claim that among couples, males speak fewer words in a day than females. So we want to figure out what the null and alternate hypotheses are. So the null hypothesis is always equals, no matter what, OK? And there's always a zero here, always, no matter what. And then we want males to speak fewer words than females. So we have to think about whether this is going to be less than zero or greater than zero. So if males speak fewer words than, than females, what you do is you do before minus after. OK, always, before minus after. So in this case, we want males to speak fewer words. So when you do before minus after, you should get a negative number. For example, here, if I do 1399 minus this, I'm going to get a negative number. And this is a case where male, a male speaks fewer words than the female. So you want the differences to be negative because the males have to speak fewer words. That's the hardest part. So we pick less than zero. Enter zero. And then in StatCrunch, you go to stat, t, and then it's paired. Stat, t, and then paired. And then you left click. And then just pick the first thing and pick the second thing. And then just change this to less than zero. And again, the reason it's less than zero is because you want the males to speak fewer words than females. So this number, when you subtract, you should get a negative number, right? Because you want the first number to be smaller. Click Compute. And there's uh, probably what, what it wants, most of the answers. So let me go ahead and click Check Answer here to get uh, this part right. Good stuff. And then it wants the test statistic, which we have here. Uh, to two decimal places, that's negative 0.44. So negative 0.44. Check Answer. Good stuff. And then it wants the p-value to three decimal places, so 0.335. 0.335, check answer, good stuff. And then since the p-value is, well, alpha here was 0.05. So the p-value is greater than alpha. Whenever the p-value is bigger than alpha, you fail to reject. If it's smaller, you reject. So in this case, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. And so in this case, if you reject the null hypothesis, there is enough evidence to say that males speak fewer words. If you fail to reject, there is not enough evidence to say that males speak fewer words. So there is not enough evidence to say that males speak fewer words. And there's another follow-up question here. Looks like it wants a confidence interval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Options and Edit. Okay. Or you can do the whole thing over again. And then you just click on Confidence Interval. Okay. Confidence Interval. Okay. And it doesn't give us the confidence level, OK? So I did not expect this, because I haven't done this problem before until now. Um, so this was a one-tailed test. See how it's less than? So whenever it's less than or greater than, and it's a one-tailed test, to figure out the confidence level, you have to multiply the alpha by 2. So 2 times 0.05 is 0.10. So that's going to be 90%, because you do 1 minus 0.10. So whenever it's less than or greater than, you do 1 minus 2 times this. So if it was greater than, you would do 1 minus 2 times 0.05, so 0.90. Because it's less than, we also do the same thing, 1 minus 0.10. If it was not equal to, like say this was not equal to here, it would be 0.95. So whenever it's not equal to, you just do 1 minus alpha. When it's less than or greater than, you do 1 minus 2 alpha. So just uh, kind of a random thing uh, to keep in mind. So let's try it. So there's our answers there. Okay. So it says nearest integer, so that's going to be a whole number for us. So negative 8191 and 5081. All right, fantastic. And it says, what feature of the confidence interval leads to the same conclusion uh, reached in part A? Well, the confidence interval contains 0. So uh, in this case, 
we can't say that um, the means are different. So since it contains zero, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So kind of a tough question. I didn't expect it to be that hard. I kind of rushed through it. Uh, hopefully, that hopefully that made sense. That's it.